I'm press record. Oh, okay, okay, so, so it's my birthday. Give it to him, Rick. Give it to him. I got <laughs> out of here. And so, so this is this is great. Rick yeah. just mentioned my my loss as in front of uh, my son right. at the World Series of Tai Chi push hands, push hands which was a, a I was the head judge, so I was not a competitor. Uh, but in, in my opinion, it's important for the judges to compete, uh, to be able to compete against any of the players. And it, it, so it was great. So uh, see from Nick Aslop beat me 14 to eight on fixed step push hands, the first uh, of its kind in the US with the uh, risen pedestals, uh, uh, tai, uh, tai Chi World Cup style, Taiwanese style. So uh, Rick, Rick just mentioned, Rick Myers just mentioned Rick Barrett, who I actually trained with at William C.C. Chen's, Grandmaster William C.C. Chen's. I trained with in preparation for my first Tai Chi World Cup in 2004, I believe. And it might've been even a little bit more for, because after Josh Waiskin dropped off the team and, and just essentially became the coach um, and with, without competing, I believe Rick was still there when I was preparing for the 05 ICMA season in Orlando, where the, the uh, top team in the world, Taiwan, came to visit us and were highly disappointed by the American ecosystem of Tai Chi push hands. They were, they were incredibly disappointed. Yeah. Uh, and Rick was judging that event uh, in Orlando of 2005 in June or July of 2005. And that's, there's some clips online on my YouTube channel. So Rick was just saying uh, about training. I, I understand all of that, you know, now that you've added all this information, I, start, I started learning true Kung Fu, as I call it, in Taiwan. I mean, I'd been searching for what I considered elevated true Kung Fu throughout my, my when I discovered Kung Fu in 1978, uh, I, was, I went in search to learn it here in America, never found it. It was all karate, Taekwondo, uh, Judo. I did all of that. But again, even then I was developing my style of Kung Fu, which I still call Don't Hurt Me. And when I teach it, I call it Don't Hurt Yourself. And it wasn't until I was sent to Taiwan in 2001 by Inside Kung Fu Magazine, where I was a, an editor, uh, that I found my teacher who was doing uh, Qigong, uh, Fang Song Li. And uh, he taught me more in 20 minutes than I had learned in the past 23 years. And, and suddenly I went, oh, and you know what's nice about my style of Kung Fu, don't hurt me, uh, our motto is open mind, open hand, open heart. Um, and once my mind is opened, it doesn't close again. Even today, when I talk to all these other Tai Chi students, they do the class, they're going, oh, this is amazing, this is amazing. And by the way, the class is a wee bit of alchemy every Tuesday night on Zoom. Uh, and you can go to Rick Barrett's uh, YouTube room and see all the 90 plus ones we've done already during the pandemic. And a wee bit of alchemy, it's called? A wee bit, a wee bit of alchemy. I like that name. It's great. Start from the beginning. And Rick has changed a lot because Rick also does the Tai Chi alchemy in Sedona, Arizona every year. And I went to the, a bunch of those. But, and also a lot of the students close their minds as soon as the class is over. But I don't do that. Once my mind is open, it stays open. And Rick, when he was with Chen, had a different style. And now if you, if you just start watching the wee bit of alchemies on YouTube, you'll start seeing where it's going. But when you and I pushed all those years ago, Jan, I kept trying for you to stop trying to unbalance me and get into balance with me. That was the first step. Because you know, when I was working with uh, Steve Watson, the world heavyweight Tai Chi push hands champion at that time, who I met in Taiwan at the championships. Who I also trained with with Rick in at William C. C. Chen. Yeah, and Rick uh, again. Rick and Fang Sang Lee and Stephen taught me just how important the internal mental aspect is, because we call it the body mind now. We don't call it the mind or body, the mind and body. It's body mind. They're in partnership. And you can see the way each of those guys taught and how they learned, how they got better. Because, you know, of course, I was Kung Fu consultant on Kung Fu Panda. And the big trick at the end of Kung Fu Panda is, no, I figured it out. You know, in other words, did Sifu teach you that? No, I figured it out. And that's the whole idea. So 
when I was working with you, what I was trying to get you to do is to stop trying to win and start trying to share because that was the next step. If you shared, if you got, if they felt your energy and you felt theirs, then you could take the next step, which is they could never win because all you would do is return their energy to them without using any of your own. You would just return their energy to them. And I have one of the students for Steve, he always, whenever he showed up, he was always awesome. He'd always go, push me, push me. And I'm going, I'm not gonna push you because I know what's gonna happen if I push you. But it was so exciting to push him. I was kidding around with him. I would push him and the moment my hand went out, his hand out, went out, not to this hand, but to my shoulder. I went to his shoulder, he went to my shoulder. And when I pushed him, it made me smile and then it made me laugh because I would just keep doing it and he'd just keep doing it. And I'd start saying, stop pushing yourself, Rick. Stop pushing yourself, Rick. Stop pushing yourself, Rick. Because I was pushing myself through him. It was, again, another mind opening moment. It was just kind of like, yeah, 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 this works. And it's just a matter, again, training your brain to accept it and then letting them he couldn't push you over because he would be pushing himself over all he would ever do once you learn that. But first you have to learn to share the energy, to, to meet in the middle, not the winning, the winning mentality to my mind is always the losing mentality. Because you're not there to win. As Steve, as Steve put it the first time I met him when he was winning, uh, that he was, Steve was, was doing push hands with everybody at the Taiwan Tai Chi Championships. And when his, his uh, friend came over and said, don't you think you should start getting ready for your match? And he goes, I'm not here to win. I'm here to learn and make friends. And that it was another thing where I went, yep, this is, this is what I've been looking for my whole, my whole life. So yeah, give, give, give that a try. Oh. It's just like, especially now, where the pandemic has taught me and hopefully more people that take this time to be with yourself, to develop yourself, because you can't go any place, but you can go in, into your favorite place, the one place you actually live. I don't live here, I live inside of this. So then it's just a matter of exploring this and becoming incredibly powerful through love, because that's the other thing I learned that you know, love is literally hilariously the most powerful thing. If you use love on a so-called opponent, you'll be far more powerful than if you use anger or hate or frustration or whatever negative emotion. Uh, Rick taught me to be able, uh, no, it was actually Don Ethan Miller, another Tai Chi giant who taught me how to, um, throw somebody across the room without using any of my own energy. Uh, just, yeah, it was just, again, approach it with love, approach it with love, share that energy. And then if that person wants to toss you, they'll be tossing themselves. Okay. So I, I have, I wanna say, I, I deeply appreciate and love all the things you just said. And my, my, I, I want to add a layer a, a, a few layers to the conversation. One of which is when I, I, I use WIN as an acronym for wealthy inner narrative. And so I focus on like winning to me is actually having the wealthy inner narrative. Right. And, and if I have that, uh, that wealthy inner narrative includes the love and it also includes a, a bunch of layers of, uh, of understanding how that love can practically be applied and practically includes uh, uh, an understanding of timing and, and being present, understanding what, what the data is from the, the past and being able to uh, sense as well as predict the future without necessarily having to have overt stimuli. And what I mean by that is that you can see just from looking at somebody where the tension is in their body because your eye has the subtle, uh, is, is used to processing the subtleties in the form and the posture, et cetera. And, and there's a bunch of other things that I'm not saying right now, but essentially it's, it's, a, it's a dense, uh, it, it's, it, there's density there. 
And yeah, my question to you is practical. It can be practically applied to do what? So, what so, so to do anything. And so the, the, this, this anything is it, when applied to sport, and, and yeah. now I'm adding the layer of athleticism here, um, and I have not watched the video yet of, of me against Nick because I had my own personal experience of it. I also have my experience of his, his game. And it's really important to note that we were playing a limited weight class. And in this, for, you know, this is not, not a rank thing, but I, he had 60 pounds on me. And so yeah. like at some point I felt like, man, I can't, if, if I do this move, I won't be able to, to withstand that 60 pounds. And so I felt personally during this, this, um, this match that strategically, I started gassing uh, about, cause I was in the lead for the first like five points or so. Uh, and I have to check, like, don't quote me on that, but there was a point where it was five something and I was in the lead and then I got a point taken away for grabbing, which we're gonna remove any, any traditional uh, 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 floaty clothing where it's only gonna be our ash guards coming for the next uh, <laughs> uh, 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 tournament. But what I'm getting at is that I think that the it's I, I've while I know that my body was not um, at my at the competitive shape that it should have been in um, or it could have been in, not should have because I wasn't a competitor but I'm also aware that strategically uh, I should have been able to outperform and I was very very clear that about halfway through I'm like wow I'm not coming up with the same ideas that I was coming up with in the first few for few points. And, you know, there's a bunch of contributing factors for that. And I, I'm not using these as, as, as excuses, but getting to that moment, I did not have the mental capacity to perform the way I wanted to perform. And well, so, and, and, so I, I, and, I, and I'm totally aware of, of, of the, the training I could have done to prepare myself uh, 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 just more dynamically, as well as getting more sleep and getting a, and, and a better diet for that. Uh, so I have to take all that into account. I'm going to do a breakdown video of it soon, but I think it's, I have to look at it from that standpoint of saying, okay, I know I have strategic concepts that this player does not have. I know that this player has um, weight that I don't have and other particular advantages. It's weight that, it, that you could use. That's 60 extra pounds. A hundred percent. So uh, absolutely, I completely agree with you because I was playing with mostly guys, his to prepare for this, I was actually playing with mostly guys his his weight, but they weren't as uh, competitively experienced as him. They were from other, either other martial arts or they were former Tai Chi push hands players that let's say got more into bouncing and street fighting, et cetera. And so I was like, okay, this is great. I can play with these guys, but they may not be in the game in the same way. And he was very much in the game. And, and that's to his credit. And I, and I, I you know, I, when I, I wanna be clear with everyone who's, who might, might watch this, them, I, I have no desire to take anything away from Nick. I think Nick is very, very talented. My yeah. desire is to continue to build an ecosystem that takes the strategies that we've seen as the U.S. Tai Chi push hands team under Josh and under me as, as, as the captain and coach for, for my time period on there and to be able to sit, uh, share them readily with, with the new players and the new crop so we can actually build an American Tai Chi a system for players here that have the data that isn't readily available because they're not playing in the Tai Chi World Cup in Taiwan. Yeah. So that, that, yes. Yeah. If the, if the goal is to win, you'll always limit yourself. If the goal is to learn, you'll always win. So I, I, I agree with you. And, and we also still want to have the number one team in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you. And now I'm going to close the mind again. Here we go. The number one team in the world. Number one team in the world. <laughs> Got my little, I'm going to bring my little I want to change, you know, action figure here. <laughs> now, who do I, I want to bring, oh, by the way, yeah, I want to bring oh, my, yeah. my, you want to know who the greatest Kung Fu guy is? You'll find out July 1st in the movie theaters. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, should, should we be, should I be paying attention to the minions? Check out the trailer for the, uh, the new movie coming out July 1st. You'll notice you'll notice they're doing something which I taught them. Hold on, are, are you an advisor on this film? Yeah, I was consultant on this film. Oh man, oh, this is the new, the new Minions now? It's, yeah, The Rise of Gru, Minions the Rise. Two. Oh man, so, oh, it's, I think Jet, my, my, my little son has been, been uh, waiting for that. Well, and, take a look at the trailer. So if I look out the window right now, there's a giant Minion 
out yeah. the window because we're right by Universal Studios in, in, yeah. in uh, North Hollywood. Well, look at the toys. There's there's already uh, the, the one of the um, what are they called? The uh, one of the pops is Kung Fu Kevin. Kung Fu Kevin. Kung Fu Kevin, and they all learn Kung Fu in the movie. They learn it from Michelle Yeoh. Um, and um, is she in the movie? As a voice, yeah. Oh wow. She's the voice of their teacher. I want to see her new film too. That little everything, whatever, I don't know what it's called, but it looks fantastic. Oh, that's a, that's also amazing. That's also just. I love the Marshall movie. Club. Those guys, I love them. Yeah. 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 So in any case, so yeah. So again, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, I, Rick, I, I, I want to make sure you and Adam meet for a second here because Adam Weinberg is a, a just a delightful human being who's also <laughs> in the media space who's also a Tai Chi Qigong practitioner who is, is really, really in tune with a, a bunch of complementary modalities. So uh, he, he is also a, a big supporter of the Justice for Hire and Real World uh, uh, Endeavor as well. So it's just great to, to see both of you on the same screen. Someday, someday I'll get to do, you know, I, I was very, I was very, I was slightly saddened when I saw that Fox had a show called The Cleaning Lady. And I went, oh, they ripped that off from me. But um, I still want to do, I want to still do my, our justice for higher things. It's going to be complicated. Vincent Lin is in the Ukraine today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and his, his uh, Charlotte, um, who are both going to be cast members of my little bit, she's now uh, working on, in a New York law firm. So I'm, I'm going to be curious when and if I ever get to, um, get out into the world again, uh, how we're gonna be able to put the thing together. I'm pretty sure Pierre, Ricard, or, uh, Pierre Edouard, uh, who's also a cast member will still be able to be in it, but who knows? I still don't know when we'll be able to do it when, I mean, it, it, it looks like we're gonna be going the, the full five year pandemic for that. Again, humans learn nothing. <laughs> because the, you know, I, I saw somebody post something that that kind of discouraged me and I don't even like repeating it, but I think it's appropriate a place to start and then um, move from what I, what I wanted to share with you both is he said, um, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. And everybody who knows history has to stand by the sidelines while everybody else repeats it. Yeah. I wanted to do a, t a set of t-shirts saying doomed to repeat it. Yeah. I just, yeah, but that's but on true. the, on the other hand, um, you know, where, where Jan and I connected was at a um, uh, spiritual center in Manhattan that was like a WeWork, like a co-working um, He's been facility, to the assemblage. Uh, called The Assemblage. Mm -hmm. And um, and he was the one, and our, our language patterns are kind of similar, the way that we approach things. And I think that's why the owner put us together. And we're the only two guys teaching Qigong in the whole facility. Everybody else was um, yoga, Reiki, um, you know, these types of things. And, and when Jan and I started exploring Nagong together, that's where for me, um, things got really, you know, intense because as I was doing the push hands with the, you know, with Qigong informed, uh, movement and then further dissected into Nagong informed, you know, interaction with my Kwa and, and, and these things, I, I started to see how, um, I was having that push hands dynamic with everybody I was interacting with in New York city, where if I lent my energy, mostly I can, I would say from my throat, all of my energy was coming through my voice. Cause that's how every nobody's communicating physically in, in, you know, in New York and in, in, nobody touches each other. So if my language was too strong, I would see how I was already un unbalancing them. So, learning how to through the push hands let them come to me and then guide them back to themselves mm -hmm. um started to impact my business in a positive way and so i would as i was talking to people be maintaining an awareness of my dantian and be maintaining an awareness of what emotion was arising and and people always say to me like what are you wiggling for you know what what you got ants in your pants i'm, I'm like i'm just moving energy because i don't want to you know, you just said something that would have angered the old me, but I don't want to engage with that anger and then have an argument about that. You said something I don't like. I want to embrace your, the diversity of your opinion and see how that can inform my perspective. 
And um, so, you know, so fast forward, of course, um, uh, the pandemic dismantles all of the relationships that we were all building at that time and sent us uh, into our caves. And I started to see how um, even the people like in my building, uh, the other day I, I broke my heart. The woman had McDonald's delivered. And <laughs> the amount of money that it costs to have McDonald's delivered, like, is at a level of what we were just saying about that doom, <laughs> which is, you know, which is why I love this band from Virginia called wind hand, they're doom metal. And they're just, they're so, um, when, when, when I recorded them in the studio, they had a bundle of incense, the size of my face on the top of a stack of speakers that was taller than I was. And, um, so, so wind hand for doom metal, but, um, I wanted to mention two two things. First of all, first of all, I'm kind of like gabbing, uh, be, be because of the level of knowledge that that you have, Rick, and how you know great it is just to be in your presence. Because the 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 vibe that you emit, you know, is it, I can is tangible, and um, I'd love to to interact more. And and I'm I'm really. Um, uh, I don't know where if other combat modalities have a healing modality associated with it besides tai chi and i'm this so that's my first question but before we go there my my question for jan is um does it affect your competitive performance having the injury that you have because does that does that play a factor in you know you being able to do the kinds of things you love to do or it, does that give you an advantage because of the way that you're uh compensating for it nobody else has that injury to compensate for uh, I, 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 the quick answer to that is that for the first time in my life i for the last several weeks even leading up to the tournament i felt like falling apart and after the tournament i actually felt like i was just going to drop and that's because i i intentionally take on a lot as a matter of fact the uh, ting jing healing um ben sanchez who's a, a former uh, push hands competitor who, who's uh, amazing with a Tai Chi body brushing trademark. Because <laughs> he told me don't say bone setting anymore because it's legally the wrong thing to say. But uh, he identified that in my body the, the week, uh, two weeks before the tournament. He was like, hey man, like what I'm seeing here is that you tank and you just keep on going. And that's what I've, maybe not what I've had to do, uh, but it's, it's what I've chosen um, to get to where we are with all of the, like real world is, is a full-time experience. The production company Creative Impulse is a full-time experience. Justice for Hire is a full-time experience. Training is a full-time experience. So all of these things, being a dad, all of that stuff uh, mixed together. And I, I'm, I do my best not to complain about it, but I'm doing my best also to be very honest. Um, so there has been, a, uh, for the last few weeks, I've definitely felt that. And I haven't really stopped since I came back out to California in 2020. So uh, there's been kind of no, no breaks uh, except when I got COVID on Christmas. <laughs> that was my first break was getting COVID on Christmas. And I was just, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a few days. <laughs> so that being said, I'm aware that I, and I've been, uh, last week I took all the entire week off. I was messed up. And this week is my first week back at training. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just shifting a lot of my behaviors and my patterns for getting to sleep earlier because normally I'm the last one to sleep after midnight. I'm the first one awake, bef you know, before 7 a.m. So <laughs> like I said, I, and I've gone to the hospital like several times for this kind of behavior in, in years past uh, from just kind of like pushing myself, burning the candle on both ends. So I'm just balancing that out now uh, as, a, you know, an entrepreneur and as an athlete. But um, <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know if this, my, because we're on we're on recording. I don't know if this is public knowledge, the, the injury that I'm referring to. So if we, you know, if I don't want to mention it and blow your cover. Oh, blow my cover. I don't, I'm not sure exactly. What you're, I thought you were talking about like the, the knee from scootering. No, your your wrists. Oh, and that's not an injury. That's birth. I, I'm very public about that. I can't turn oh. my wrists. For, I have scar well, that, that's, that's what I'm saying is, is how does that impact your competitiveness? And is it, does it give you an advantage because other people wouldn't be um, uh, familiar with it? Or does it give you a disadvantage that you're, that you're compensating for. Oh, I think all the event, all the limitations are, are opportunities for, for unique uh, growth and, and, and unique approach. And I think that if it wasn't for me having 
um, essentially fused bands on my in the muscles from birth and I'm not being able to turn my wrists over, which has makes me have to do different concepts, integrate different concepts into uh, into my push hands game or like, you know, missing pectoral major here from birth. So like this is all essentially rib cage rather than muscle uh, and mm -hmm. having to fight differently uh, from my first uh, Sancho fights with Lee Tailand when I was 18 and, and, and all that. So all of that to me is just you know, I'm like, hey, I don't have this muscle here because I have an open heart, you know, mm. <laughs> like all these things of reframing them for myself so that I can, um, you know, give in the way that I'm supposed to give. So that's, I'm doing my best to uh, constantly stay. That is beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. Well, um, to turn to turn it back over to Rick, my other, my other comment um, is, 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 as he was saying about working with love and and the biochemistry of love and how that um that electromagnetic field that that creates and the mindset that that creates and in terms of how you're interacting with your you know quote unquote opponent um uh that really that really resonates with me and i i would love to to hear more uh, uh, you know about that and you know like i study um, David Hawk, you know, I've studied David Hawkins and power versus force and, and, uh, you know, the new guy on the scene, Joe Dispenza and with, with, with everything that, that he has furthered since the heart math Institute out of Stanford, um, the, the research out of Stanford with the heart math Institute out of California, um, that being in a state of coherence, so, you know, the, buddy of mine is the former world kickboxing champion out of Scotland. And, and when he's asked how he was able to, to withstand so much abuse in the ring, he said he was in a state of coherence um, yeah. through, through heart math. So I, what I'm really curious about to the most part is just, you know, what other, what other combat modalities out there have a healing component to them, you know, and, and because those folks don't know um, how to heal internally, um, how to uh, stimulate uh, stem cells and fresh blood from their bone marrow, for example. Um, oh, you yeah. know, I've been doing that. that, and that so, so just I'm kind of feeding you a, a scenario. I'd just love to hear yeah. your, you know, I've heard, well, I've heard how I talk about it. I'd love to hear, hear how you talk about it. <laughs> well, I agree with what Jet Li told me. A Kung Fu student's only true opponent is themselves. And by getting into ends Literally on the streets of New York, uh, somebody recognized me and I was near a, a Sifu uh, Yan Ming's place. Oh, he kicked me out, he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, he's an awesome guy, I love him. I love, I love him too, I send people to school all the time. I love his girl, <laughs> I love his woman even more. But, um, cause you know, she, she, honesty, I can get honesty. But uh, so, what, somebody asked me, on the street, you know, what's the best Kung Fu style? What's the best martial arts style? What's the best style? And my reply was, they're all the same. And, he went, and I went, yeah, human body, human mind, the world around them. The rest is money and ego. And I hear about this competitiveness and I hear about this competition and I hear about the opponent. And I liked, I liked what, uh, again, what Watson told me, if you have an enemy, that's at least half your fault. And the highest form of Kung Fu is not to fight. We trans, in my documentary, in my book, I translated the word Kung Fu into human achievement. Not martial arts, that's wuxia, human achievement. Or what, how Jet Li described it, concerted effort toward a specific goal. But that also leaves the door open. What's your specific goal? Winning, competing, hurting yourself. If that's your goal, you're in a no, you're already in a no-win scenario. If you're spending all your time damaging yourself and then searching for some way to heal yourself, it's kind of like, listen, I'm older than you guys, probably put together. And I know what I, I know the end of the story. As a writer, I know the end of the story. Every story ends exactly the same way, the end. And it's just a matter of how you feel at the end. Also, as Kung Fu Santa, I've met four-year-olds. And when I came back to the children's hospital the following year, one of those four-year-olds wasn't there and not because she didn't want to be. So I know that it all depends. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And it's also a matter of how well, 
if you saw the new Michelle Yeoh movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and also the whole multiverse concept, it's, yeah, it's, it's how you use your time, not how much time you have, and also how you end your time. Are you able to say at the end, that was fun? That was good. I enjoyed myself. I love myself. Therefore, I love everything and everything and everyone. Then, then you're, you're in pretty good shape. Also, I agree. When I, looked at all, I, when I looked at all the teachers I've had over the, I started learning in 1978, mar martial arts in 1978 to 2001, Kung Fu from 2001, forever. Ultimately, it all comes back to, again, there is no, there are no styles. It's one thing, human body, human mind, the world around them. But then I go back to my favorite teaching, which is not something he was able to teach to a lot of people, which was what Bruce Lee said, learn everything you can from everyone and everything you can. Then we go back to Kung Fu Panda again. The final thing that people, people, life of Brian, Bruce Lee, life of Brian, Brian is saying, think for yourselves. And they all repeat in unison, we will think for ourselves, which means that they're, they're trying to, so everybody with Bruce, they just, you know, he says, learn everything you can from everyone you can. But then he says, then make it your own. All the fans I know, the, the fan ghouls, as I call them, all the ones who are dancing on his graves, they forget that part. We will just copy you. We will make the noise. We will be aggressive. We will use our fists. And it's like the only guy who ever kind of actively, publicly, followed what Bruce actually said was Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan was asked to be the Bruce Lee clone. He said, fuck that. I tried it once, it sinks. I'm going to be me. And so he created his own style and he became a huge superstar. And of course he would. And that's what I'm trying to do with Justice for Hire. Again, I'm trying to see what all these other guys are doing and I'm going to go, nope, I'm going well, to make it more logical. Speaking of, speaking of Justice for Hire, that's a good uh good place to enter some new data for Jan and, and now knowing that you're involved. Oh my God, my neighbors. So like, I'm trying to build some relationships with my neighbors Yeah. and I live in a small building. Yeah. Um, the gentleman across the hallway is a photographer. Yeah. The gentleman downstairs is an armed security guard manager and yeah. trainer. Yeah. And the guy across the hallway from him is a former NYPD mounted uh, horseback, uh, former NYPD. So, Ooh. and a pilot and a pilot. So. I have a park across the street and in this park, uh, we have a dog park, a basketball court, a children's play. Is that ground. the Chinatown one? Is that the Chinatown? No, no, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in New Jersey, West oh, New Jersey. York. Oh, Jersey, okay. Where in New Jersey? Uh, West New York, it's right above Weehawken, right above the Lincoln Oh, Park. sure, okay. Yeah. And um, uh, the Port Imperial Ferry is a five minute walk from me. So um, we have a baseball diamond, we have a skate park, we've yeah. got a tennis court, handball yeah. court, and, um, and some really cool little alcoves and, and some stone steps and things. And if I set up my cameras appropriately and you guys can see over Zoom, of course, what's going on and help me block the shot properly. And I have a former NYPD and an armed security guard uh, trainer to, to run some drills with. Um, as I understand it, a lot of times it's just about blocking the shot and getting the footage and adding the, you know, you can always, you can always do a shot with the head like this and like that and add the dialogue in the background. If there's just a couple of key facial um, emotions and a couple of key um, dialogue, then everything else can be added later yep. and we can get a few shots. And I think that um, uh, I think that we could have, we can have a lot of fun in this park towards ultimately for me, um, I, want, I want to interact with the city in terms of uh, starting a community garden in the park and and having everybody contribute to to some kind of herbalism uh you know stuff so anyway that's the, the, that's how i dream when i walk outside and i you know okay. I, I yeah all right let me give you the let me give you the lesson mm. one of the high precepts of my my style of kung fu is you know it starts with it starts with the highest form of kung fu is not to fight to make your enemy your friend and if somebody wants to try to hurt themselves by trying to hurt you, you're, you're, 
you as a Kung Fu student will help them hurt themselves if they, if they choose. But the major thing of my specific form is you cannot read anyone else's mind. You can only read your own. Mm. That's where you should start and continue. You're looking to get other people to do things. Start with yourself. Until mm -hmm. you, know, you wanna make friends with these people, you have to make yourself into somebody they wanna be friends with. And that's by being understanding, knowing yourself, finding your internal landmines and diffusing them. Mm -hmm. Finding out why you do things, what, what's motivating you. People are always out, out, out. People are always saying, you, you, you. And I'm always going, I, I, I. And again, open mm -hmm. hand. Not, you know, fists, not push. It's always, you seem upset. Can I buy you a beer? Mm -hmm. It's, you start with you. Everything comes from you. You literally, again, where do I live? I live in here. What do I do for a living? I live. And, and because I'm stuck with me, I mean, for the last three years, literally stuck with myself. I just, I just exalted in me. I just exalted. And now because of what Rick Barrett is teaching and Fong Song Lee is teaching in terms of, I mean, he's doing, he begrudgingly does uh, martial. 95% of what he's teaching now is internal healing. And it has been, again, Rick taught me, and again, in 20 minutes, more than I had learned in 23 years, uh, in terms of, I mean, and now as I'm getting older and, and, and the ship is beginning to break down, I'm the captain of the ship. I'll be leaving the ship when the, when the ship breaks down. Um, I could tell you the whole story of my father dying and coming back from the dead at my request. But in any case, um, his internal healing, I mean, I was having wicked, wicked pains here. It's, and on the basis of my research, it was the beginning of arthritis. And with, with the healing stuff that Rick, again, just go to YouTube, Rick Barrett, wee bit of alchemy, start with number wee one, bit of alchemy. 95. And at the end of it, you will be able to, again, mark the only reason healing applications aren't in every martial arts is because of money and ego. Mm. Because that's when I teach my style, I don't ask for money. I don't have a school. Because once you have a school and students, the desire to make a living makes you teach what they want rather than what they should not. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if anybody takes my teaching at all. I'm taking my teaching and I am benefiting, benefiting enormously from it. And it's simply because I have an open mind because most people I've met, again, one, a lot of the things that happen in the push hands, like what was happening in Sedona, we would have these in muscles I trust, in fists I trust guys. And oftentimes Rick would always pair them with me because they were huge and muscular and I, I am what I am. And they would start pushing and start pushing and start pushing. And I would just start smiling wider and wider and letting them push me, letting me then push me, letting them push me, letting them push me <laughs> until I got to a place where I could go no further. And then I would anchor, I would root, and I would lean in, I would place my hands that were filled with their energy on, upon them and say, you know, you don't have to prove to me you're a man. <laughs> and ultimately, when I hear all these guys, also in Justice for Hire, I watch what the goal of each of these scenes is. Again, it's to win, it's to beat somebody. And, and also, to, but underneath all of that, the thing that I think is the foundation for the flaw of all of that is that they're trying to prove that they're tough, and my favorite word, badass. <laughs> trying to prove, and I'd always go, who are you trying to prove that to? Ultimately, I watch these scenes they're not really trying to prove it to their opponent. They're trying to prove it to themselves. Everybody's trying to prove to themselves how tough they are, how much I can take. How can you take all that abuse? 
my answer is, my question is always, why are you taking all that abuse? Mm -hmm. There is no blocking in my style because I don't want you to punch me in the face. Why would I want you to punch me on the arm? It's because especially you don't need to do it. It's always, you're, you're able to move and control and use their energy against them. Yeah, I don't want you to prove how badass and tough you are. I want you to prove how smart and effective you are. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, another, I always say, I don't know, uh, I have my dear friend, Fat Samurai Guy, P-H-A-T, Fat Samurai Guy. He has a YouTube channel. We do video stuff. We do Kung Fu movies and stuff on his YouTube channel. And he's always saying, badass, badass, badass. And I'm going, no, I am not a badass. I strive to be a good ass. <laughs> and also, for the most part, even a great ass. And what's great about being a great ass is that people are able to go, oh, Rick, Rick Myers, he's that, oh, what a great ass that guy is. And I'm going... <laughs> That's right. That's right. So again, that's what I want to do with my justice for hire bit. Again, to teach the difference between smart and effective, somebody who does not want to hurt themselves, someone who does not want to hurt anyone else. The moment someone does this and uses this thing, all they're telling me is I want to hurt myself. I want to prove how tough I am, how much I can take. Why would you want to take anything? Because I know what happens at the end after you've taken all that abuse. You don't come back, you don't come out better. You come out, I mean, Alan Goldberg, he's got all these injuries because he spent his whole life trying to prove himself. Mm. Mm. Not to me, he's trying to prove himself to himself from bad parenting or whatever. So ultimately the goal is it's all eternal. It's all there inside you, you figure it out. You study your human mind, your human body, the world around you. And you see how it all interconnects and you try to make it all better. You try to show how smart and effective you are. So when I teach, I'm not teaching them. I'm saying, here's a book on human physiology. Find all the places on the human body where all you have to do is that. And not even hard. And I was just, because of this, uh, because of this pain, which is no longer here, by the way, I, I was saying to Rick, because I also do a bunch of, I take Tai Chi from a bunch of other teachers all over the world. I do my 45 minute regimen in the morning and I'm doing the, uh, the pressure points here. Yep. But for yep. years, I, I've, but even I fell into the trap, which was no pain, no gain. <clears throat> I'm gonna be really tough. I'm going to, oh, I want to feel that muscle, man. And now I'm Kung Fu, I'm Kung Fu Santa. And, um, and so Rick was saying, would Santa do that? No, mm -hmm. everything is tenderness. Everything is love. Everything is kindness. And of course, overnight, literally overnight, because now we're learning how to train our brains. So while we sleep, we're still healing ourselves. So when we wake up, we're not all mm -hmm. stiff mm -hmm. and headachy or whatever. We're, just, we're starting to learn that process. But I learned the process here, the moment I stopped slamming my hands together to feel, you know, to feel the energy. All I have to do is call upon it. All I have to do mm. is tap into the big chi, as Rick calls it, which you'll learn from the wee bits of alchemy. And, wee bits of alchemy, yeah. Yeah, wee bit of alchemy on YouTube. I just opened it. <laughs> yeah. And so now I, I do everything tender. I treat my... <laughs> One of the great things that ever happened, I was going to a Tai Chi event in New York at the park by the, uh, by the ferry, the Staten Island Ferry. And I was having sciatic-like pains in my leg over the last, over the previous few years. And it, a lightning bolt went right through my leg on the train. And I looked at the, and my instant reaction was like, bam, I whacked my leg. <laughs> and one of my Tai Chi friends leaned over and went, Rick, you know, that's you you're hitting. <laughs> I went, of course, treat myself. That's another one of my lessons in my style of Kung Fu. Treat yourself at least as well as that which you say you love the most. Because I know a mm. lot of people who treat a lot of other people much better than they treat themselves. Much mm. better. And I was sort of like going from that moment when I hit myself, I said, no. I think of all my problems and all my pains 
as lost crying little children. And I'm not going to backhand a lost crying little child. I am mm -hmm. going to say, buddy. And that's what Rick is also teaching. Everything he teaches is treat yourself at least as well as that which you said you learned from them. And so now all, all my healing motions, it's as simple, again, as, as having an open mind. Because, you know, you take your hands, you rub them together. A lot of people, you know, all these elements I've had are gone now. My last medical checkup, the doctor called my blood work immaculate. That was the word he used. And the dentist, uh, I went to the dentist. Everyone in the office was coming over to look at my mouth. Because they were expecting me, to, I'm now at the age where things would start to be falling out. But it was a matter of people would say to me when I got rid of the sciatica, when I got rid of the arthritis, they would say, well, that's just your imagination. And my reply was, exactly. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Because it's body mind. It's not mind or body, mind and body. It's body mind. And it's mm. like, I'm going to use my imagination to tap into the big chi, to let the energy flow, to let it heal. Now I do a little mantra as I'm going to sleep, which is rest, relax, repair, regenerate. And that, those are the instructions I'm leaving with my mind as I go to bed. Sometimes I go mm -hmm. healing, health, harmony too. Now I find as I get older that I can feel my balance beginning to go. So now mm -hmm. I'm working on balance stuff. But again, it's all a matter of looking at myself and going, I'm there for you, baby. I'm there for you, Rick. I'm your best friend, your best critic, your best judge. I am, I'm going to be there for you and do what I can. So whenever anything happens now, it's just another, it makes me smile. It's like there's a, another lovely, lovely child, but go on. Yeah, I'll talk forever. It, if you stop, if you don't stop me. Well, no, I mean, I, I, and it's just, it's ringing some bells in my mind that I want to get out before I lose them, which is, um, Grandmaster Nan Lu, who's in Flatiron, New York yeah. City, yeah. Um, he teaches uh, as a basic for, for anybody doing acupuncture through his uh, facility and the, the acupuncturist that he has. Mm -hmm. um, the, the opening Qigong that he teaches is the four gateways. And the first gateway is five minutes of this. And he says it'll solve 70% of your problems. Right. And then five minutes of this, and that'll solve 20 more percent. And then there's some uh, um, pelvis banging and stuff, but um, <laughs> pelvis banging, right? But we call uh, it tapping. We we do pelvis pelvis tapping. We don't do ringing tapping. ringing the ringing the bell, I guess. But um, uh, but but is it me, aggressive or is it if it is it healing or is it aggressive? Oh no, it, yeah, it's just you know, just swinging and you know and and yeah, tapping. But when you when you when you rub, are you rubbing like? Uh, are you? No, 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 no. It's very, yeah. I mean, be nice to yourself. Yeah, 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 of course. And um, yeah. where, where things really, uh, in New York City, the, the teacher that I found that had gone to uh, learn from the Medicineless Hospital yeah. uh, brought over a gentleman named Master Zhang She to teach us Jineng Qigong. And um, in the Medicineless Hospital, Dr. Pang Ming, um, this, is, this is what Greg Braden is, uh, fam his famous video of them uh, dissolving a tumor in three minutes through chanting. Uh, on the sonogram. So um, Dr. Pang Ming's uh, style of Qigong has um, as a foundational thing, which is Hao La, uh, already healed, already in a perfect state, nothing else needs to be done. And um, and I get a resonance in my body as my association, Hao La, like I'll get an endorphin rush just from saying it out loud, which is why I love to bring it into conversation. Um, but uh, the, the thing about um, what you're saying about people being in these situations on, um, because ultimately it's going to come down to combat. That's what every, every major motion picture has. Every, every storyline on TV has I intend some, to change that. And, and so, so for example, if I gave you a scenario across the street, I've got a basketball court. Mm -hmm. What is the, di I always, I always look at it like, um, there are different types of fishermen's knots and each fisherman's knot is a, is a, um, is a story. How does it loop and come back to itself? So, what is the story of a bunch of gentlemen on a uh, basketball court? And what's the dialogue look like that brings in the principle that you're trying to express? Um, well, it's super and, easy. 
It's uh, all of that super easy. Have them do the wrong thing and you do the right thing. In other words, if they're aggressive, if they're aggressive trying to prove to themselves to themselves or anybody else, it's just a matter of somebody, you know, with a long beard. Uh, just sort of like going. I mean, what's the goal? One of my, there's a, there's a Shaw Brothers movie called The Supreme Swordsman. And The Supreme Swordsman is only in like 10 minutes of the movie. Uh, but there's a wonderful moment. The villain is spending the whole movie killing all these sword makers and all these other swordsmen so he can get a sword good enough to take on the Supreme Swordsman sword. And in the middle of the movie, he gets, he's killed the, the teacher, he's killed those, and he's got the sword and he goes in to see the Supreme Swordsman who's in his grand hall and he's sitting under, you know, and his sword is behind him on the rack and he's doing calligraphy. And the, the, the villain goes, I wanna fight you. And the Supreme Swordsman goes, what for? And he goes, I want your sword. The Supreme Swordsman turns around, picks up the sword, breaks it and throws it to him. And then goes back to his calligraphy. <laughs> so again, it's the person's goal. I mean, mm. in, my, in my thing, there's this girl in my justice for hire plan thing, there's this girl who's trying to get revenge for the death of her sister who died of a drug overdose. And she wants mm. to get revenge on the drug pushers. She, she finds one of the drug pushers, she corners him. And then she's been training how to fight. And she goes to try to beat him up and all, and he just beats the crap out of her. And he's about to do something terrible to her when the door behind them opens and the cleaner walks in, me in, in my, my custodian outfit. And, and I go, oh, 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 so sorry. No, no, so no, I didn't see anything. I closed the door. And he goes, well, even if he calls the cops, it's going to be too late for you. And then I'm going to have a big close <laughs> up of his face. And suddenly his face is going to go, and he's going to get all <laughs> bed and flushed. And then he's going to slowly fall over and I'll be behind him with a bloody baseball bat. Oh. And I lean in and I look at her and I go, that's the way you do it. And then the rest of the scene is me cleaning up because I am an act actual custodian. <laughs> I'm cleaning up and trying to get rid of him because I know he has his friends outside. But meanwhile, I'm reprimanding her. I'm, te I'm telling her that that's not the way you do it. Where did you learn how to fight like I'm saying, don't bother telling me. I know how, where you learned to fight like that from some woman who thinks that she can be as strong and as badass as a man. That's not the way you want to do it. You want to fight to win. You do not want to fight to prove yourself. And, mm -hmm. I, and again, and, and I pick up the, the corpse of the guy and I go, yeah, I saw you were using your fist. Punch it, punch it, punch it. Punch him as hard as you can. Come on, punch him. And she finally mm -hmm. punches him and goes, how did that feel? How did that feel? And she goes, not good. And I said, yeah. And then finally, uh, you know, we, I finally about to get, I put him in the, t uh, his bloody body in my roller, my roller uh, garbage can. And I'm about to leave and in comes a fellow custodian of me and goes, he's still not shutting up. It's too late now. And then his friends come in and the friends see me holding him, his little corpse up. And then I look at them and they look at me and I go, and I drop him into the can. He disappears into the can. That leads to the next episode mm. where I show, because my custodian friend is a female, the one who came in and said, you talk too long again. Uh, she's a female. <laughs> and so I use her to show the other girl, this is the way you fight somebody. This is the way you fight a guy who has 60 pounds on you, who has who's solid muscles. This is the way you fight. You don't fight like them. You don't fight with your muscles and your anger and you know, on your fists. You get smarter than that. And so my female friend just takes the other guy apart because she's not going to fight the way he fights because she's not mm. stupid. And you know, again, you, human book on human physiology and a book on human psychology. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. I put it. I put some chicken in the oven a, about an hour ago. I have to make sure it's not burning down the house. I'll be right. Uh, Adam, I, I, I just want to touch on like if you have yeah. people that you want to shoot something with. I think the first yeah. question is uh, along the lines of what what uh, the, you know. You know, I, I put out a JFH video to the community today saying thank you. That essentially, having had this project since I was 17 years old in high school, 23 mm -hmm. years later, uh, and it's finally moving, and it's moving because of you because you've been the missing ingredient. And 
one thing that I had to recognize is that I was a missing ingredient when I was uh, attempting to, to, to get it made the way I want it made in Hollywood. And so I had to step back and say, okay, I need to, I need to take steps toward uh, creating an ecosystem where anybody can actually become part of the cast and be a hero. Because when I go to different producers, production companies, studios, et cetera, and say, hey, I want these people in it because they're real martial artists or they're really, really talented at this particular thing. They're like, well, they're not bankable. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, hold on. Uh, well, well, like what happens if we put a few bankable people in, but then we connect it to those. And there was just all of this complication. And what really was required was just to go and do it yourself. And I had to find myself and do it myself first and actually step into a character myself and start building that, that, that narrative. So I would just say for you, if you, if you want to, to actually play a character in Justice for Hire, which I think is amazing, because I think you would be, I think a lot of people need to hear what you have to say personally. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be spectacular. And, and if that's not something that you'd like to do, then I, it's more of a di writer, director, producer thing that, that of, of organizing the other people that you've come across. But if it is you, I would start with just making a, a, a few short pieces of your story and how you're connecting that to the larger shared story world. Yeah, that's, yeah. The trick is to start. It's not to try mm -hmm. to get to the ending right away. It's to learn on the way. Well, I've, I've recognized that the, you know, the neighbors, I mean, you know, the conversations are going like, you know, we, we pass each other in the vestibule of the building. We stay, you know, maybe we chat, we chat when we standing outside on the stoop, but you know, the, the conversation has been, Hey, you know, there's a tennis court across the street. We got rackets and, and everybody kind of goes, Oh, that sounds like a good idea, but it hasn't, I know that it's, it's yeah, you know, because it you're time. depending on other people. Yeah. You can't depend on other people. You can't. It's just, and by the way, Jan, I, I'm connected with a company in LA now called Quiver Entertainment. Uh, they put out a really terrible movie, but they're doing another movie that hopefully is not terrible uh, with uh, Walter Hill, a Western. But they've asked me to develop a story for them, two stories for them, one with Ninja, one that involves Rod Van Cleef. And I was like, going, awesome, you know, we're already friends. So if you want to get involved with that, if you want to be my front man out there, um, I, can tell you, I can tell you the ideas. And sure, you, you can develop them because they they want to do them. I was on a podcast with with Ron a few months ago because of Demetrius and Ron wants to collaborate anyway. So I'd, I'd be happy to 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 be yeah. in, in any well, any way, shape, or uh, or form. Um, yeah, we can we can talk about it now, or we can talk about it whenever you want. Sure. Well, I, I do want to judge for Rick for just uh, I want to talk about that, but for your justice for hiring thing. Uh, I, I would like your story is so clear and it's also so beautifully structured with a great cliffhanger, like a comic book. And right. It's, it's also so, Rick Fu. It, 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 and it's Rick Fu. And yeah, it's you so, want to do Dan Fu, you want to do you Fu. And, and, and it's so aligned with, with what we're, we're like, one of the things that started coming to me was, was um, so my intention with us finishing this equity crowdfunding campaign is part of the cash is utilized for production fund. And the production fund is actually to pay for more premium content structured and premium with folks in our network who you know, would make beautiful, important pieces of, 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 of cinema to build out the, 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 the quality of the Justice for Higher Cinematic Universe. And so, you know, you're talking about Jen, 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 sorry, sorry to interject, but the thing that is so exciting about JFH is is in in my experience well so taking into consideration what rick's saying about starting with myself of course but as well trying to 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 get other people who are not into larping and not into cosplay to consider doing something like this with me is a long way out but there are people right now on your app literally at this moment that might want to collaborate and do a scene together Absolutely. um and that is so mind-blowing that we that we could be co-scripting and, and co-creating a uh, a cinematic piece together virtually uh, across distances and and if you're plugging that's what you're plugging me into um, I think I just need a I need the the push hand mo like a push hands with myself is um is is an exercise in perfectionism I want to make sure this lighting and I want to make sure that you know that I didn't stutter while I was talking it's like but if I'm with somebody else, it's more flowy, in, in, you know. So, 
So advice from the both of you in that direction. Well, here's the deal. Uh, uh, you're putting you, the difference which uh, what I've accomplished what I've accomplished in my life because I didn't get in my own way. And I depended on only, only one person. Um, and I can't even trust myself. So I, how can I trust anybody else? I've, already, I've often failed myself. You asked a specific question about scripting and lighting and filming, and I'm not going to answer that question because it's just like Kung Fu, which is my style of Kung Fu is not going to be yours or yours, Jan, because we're different weights, different heights, different nationalities, different temperaments. Everything has to be you Fu. So I'm not going to tell you how to film something. I'll tell you how I'm filming it, and I'm filming it in my style. It's Rick Fu. And so, the, and also I have a specific message that I want to impart because all the action I think in modern film is not all of it, but a lot of it is done very unimaginatively and unexcitingly. So I want to do it imaginatively and excitingly. And again, not to prove how tough and smart I am. I mean, not to prove how tough and badass I am, but how smart and effective I am. And that means that my fight scenes always should be fun and surprising because I'm, I want the stupid people to do this. And I get to comment on the stupid people doing this and then showing them me, this old guy with a beard, just sort of goes, because, and then, and since I'm, I'm lecturing, uh, one time um, Steve Watson stepped on a person's shin and that person went down like they were shot out of a cannon and was flopping around on, on the floor in unbelievable pain. And it shocked all the rest of it because we could feel how much pain that was doing. And it's just one little place on the shin that all he did was touch it. He didn't punch it, he didn't kick it, he didn't. So I, then I, again, my mind was open. I, so I found out all the other places on the body when you can do that. And so again, my fight scenes are going to be based on the history of, of bad fight scenes. And with one or two or three or four, my various interlopers who all have specific jobs to do in terms of taking out one to an army of people, doing it smartly and effectively as opposed to showing how badass we are and taking all this abuse. Yeah, the people are talking about how much they liked uh, nobody. And I said, that guy took way too much abuse. He's just not smart. He took, he should have been a lot smarter than that. I liked, again, Jet Li, I liked, Vincent Zhao, who spend their movies using their open hands and avoiding the stuff and letting the other people hurt themselves. Because that's the message, that's my message. So what's your message? What's your message? Why are you- What, I, what I think I'm curious about is, because I've never done, um, I've never done this. I don't know if anybody really has, except for because, except for Jan's um, vision of it, which is how do we, collaborate on a scene like right now we're on zoom and we're chatting but i would very much like to play and have you say adam stand over here say this do and and to have that um uh kind of um how does larry um larry david show is they have a particular style of improv the whole the whole show is ad-libbed out yeah. of out of a contain right like yeah. i i very love very much like i have five cameras set up there's one there's one on the ceiling here right Right. And I've got five, five cameras set up yeah. in, in my apartment to film the Qigong routines. But, but if, if I could do, you know, if I stand over here, you know, I could do dialogue over here and, you know, but that's a, so I'm, I'm curious about how, all this, how to, all this is technical. All this is technical. What's your, what's your soul? What are you trying to accomplish? What do you want to say? What do you want the audience to feel? Because, you know, basically set your, I'm going to set you a, a task. Stop with all the technology. You learn by doing. Here's the deal. Come up with your first scene. This is what, I, when I taught at the University of Richport, this is what I told the class. I want to see your first scene. And I want mm -hmm. to know within seconds, because one of the things as a judge of film festivals, the problems that I, I, I see this endlessly, the people who make these movies aren't really interested apparently in entertaining the audience. They're interested in doing mental masturbation or whatever they're doing. Mm. And I'm saying, all right, decide who your character is. I would recommend it be you because you have control of you. 
Yeah. All right. What? I'll give you an easy one. I'll do the same thing I did the class. Your character wakes up in the morning. Go. How are you going to start that scene by letting the audience know that this is going to be good? This is going to be interesting. This is going to be fun. Whatever you decide it's going to be. How do you tell them that in the shortest amount of time possible? How That's like Tom Hanks trimming his nose hairs in the beginning of Turner and Hooch. That is one of the ways to do it, but also, again, you're way up the, you're way up the food chain with that, with that comment. You want to go down to amateur. You're not starting at that level yet. So does your guy wake up? If he wakes up, what does the alarm look like? Why does he wake up? Is there an alarm playing a song? What song is it playing? Is mm -hmm. he in a bed? What is on the bed? What is what does every single thing in that shot say about that character to the audience that you want the audience to know? But mm. one thing I want to know as a judge is I want to know you know what you're doing. And I want to know that you want to entertain me. And you want to entertain me instantly. I do not want to see, you know, your promise. I hear this endlessly in for my writing teaching as well, when I teach people how to write and how to script and all the rest of it, it's like, well, I was hoping you could see the promise. And I'm going, nobody's going to be interested in seeing the promise. They want to see what you have to say. I had a wonderful editor at Millimeter Magazine. She said, you always take a running jump at your stories, at your, at your articles. You know, your first two paragraphs are usually, I usually just take out your first two paragraphs because I can see you're running up to the story. She said, I mm. want to know what the story is about in the first word. Mm. So a lot of my stories following that were love or money <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, when you're starting, I've told Justice for Hire guys this too. I mean, there are people who want to see how talented you, talented you are to make you into shit. They, you know, guys who want, if you're going to work for a studio, they're going to make you do something terrible. But mm. In order to get that job of doing something terrible, you have to show them something really good. Well, I, I love this assignment, Sifu um, Sensei, because don't, don't I have a any of that stuff. Rick. I have I, know, I, I love this assignment, yeah. Rick, because I fun. have um, an Ayurvedic dinacharya, my morning routine that I love sharing with people, and okay. I would love to film myself going through that in a fun way. And I love this assignment, so thank you. Excellent. All right. I'm going to go take care of my chicken. Happy birthday, Jan. Thank you so much. Happy really, birthday, Jan. Thank you, guys. Both you guys so much. This is this is a huge deal. Thank you for letting me record this. This is I'm going to put it on Tai Chi and the YouTube channel. Um, I, I just, just quick things I want to say about uh, understanding Rick's chicken. Uh, Rick, one, I hope you've seen uh, how much we've talked about during the last few weeks on my personal emails and the real world emails, uh, yeah. as well as uh, you being the catalyst for it season zero episode four in which max chen gets punched in the face and instead of fighting the guy who punched him i offer the guy an opportunity to become a hero with us and that was very much inspired by your talks uh yeah. and, and the advice you've given me for years which i didn't listen to until that episode yeah. and, and it felt totally different and felt completely healing and that energy is the energy that we need in action and, yeah. I, and I, I just want to say thank you for that. And because when you said, and, and Jan hasn't listened, <laughs> I'm like, hold on, hold on, that one episode. <laughs> also, you should do a little shot of me. Uh, you should set up a shot that allows me to lean into the shot and go, yeah, we want you to be the hero, but not if you do that fist stuff again. Don't be punching with your fist. That's just stupid. You know, I could always be the bearded guy who's going to go in. Yeah, we'd love you to be a justice for hire, but not with that stupid fist. That's, that's like Ed Boon or John Tobias on Mortal Kombat when they go, Whoop, oh, like that. Toasty, yeah. if you remember that. But, uh, but uh, I want to I want to uh, uh, put out there that I think it would be really valuable to do some form of short um, direct address Rick from you that we would utilize in our in our current uh, community round talking about the cleaner that like the series that, that we want to produce with you as one of our first productions uh, post-funding because I think that'll be really valuable to let both of our community or all of our communities know that we already are planning something with you that's actually based on uh, on your your wonderful journey through through martial arts and the comic book world that you you, you successfully sold successfully sold to Paramount. Yeah. And also if 
if you want to record uh, the actual speech I gave to Disney in 2017, which was called The Art of Screen Action. In fact, the full title was Kung Fu and the Art of Screen Action, which is where you got that quote about, um, uh, about how um, uh, fight, uh, fight scenes can make the audience cheer. Oh. That was the opening of my speech to Disney. Oh, really? The one that you that you told us on the on the Urban Action yeah. Showcase. We that, was, that was my that was the beginning of the speech. Oh my gosh! Mm. You know, you made a good comedy when they cry, a laugh. You make a good drama when they cry. You make a good uh, musical when they uh, move in rhythm, and you know you have a good action scene when they cheer. And then I talked about how you can accomplish that, how you can help them cheer. And the various ways you do it through character. It's not, that's why, that's what you have to start with, not with the dialogue, not with the camera, with the character and how you communicate. That's what that lesson is about, how you communicate things silently without dialogue. And you can put the camera anywhere. I mean, I, the whole, I, I mean, that's what I love about the new way of filming. You just pick up your camera and you just shoot what's going on. You don't, you don't do, you know, sweeping stuff. It's just capture what's going on. Let the characters communicate themselves to the audience, but because you're smart and effective, you have shown them how to do that. Okay, is this an angry character? How do we show them that he's angry? Oh, wait a minute, my agent is calling. Hold on. Hey, Rick, how are you doing, man? I'm good. What's up? I'm good. I wanted to give you an update. So, uh, called him yesterday we we're gonna get on the line with his wife and his lawyer uh, -huh. uh we, we put it over today i just got off the phone with them they are fantastic the boy yeah is a great guy yeah uh Stu and ruthie of course are great yeah so there are they're going to talk amongst themselves and they'll get back to me but i'm sure it's a you know there's going to be some he said the lawyer said there would be some tiny tiny changes to the writer collaboration agreement but you know barely anything you and I would notice. So they're gonna get that done. Great. And they went over the deal memo. I was able to answer all their questions. So there are really only two questions and I wanted to to clarify those with you and then I'll also talk to Peter yeah. about them. Uh, is the deadline, you know, how sure do you feel about the January fourth deadline, knowing and this is the part that I had forgotten about or didn't didn't mm -hmm. wasn't thinking of, knowing there's gonna be a DOD review in there. Yeah. And it's so I, yeah. It's not up to me. It's up to it's up to two. In other words, if two is on the line doing the interviews every week or every two weeks, then I have full confidence that we'll get we'll get it there on time even early. But if for some reason he's in the Ukraine or whatever else and he can't because it's his story, you know, I can't make up his story for him. I can just organize it. So it's up to him, but if he's available and he said he's really excited about it and he's really interested in it, and if he continues to be two, then we'll be then we'll be golden. What's the other question? Okay, so that's it. It's it's the, the combination which you can only answer the writing question and that's in conjunction with two. So I'm just gonna put, you know, yes. Yes. Based on two's availability, yes. which two has said is, is fine. Now just out of curiosity. No, he's got any involvement with Ukrainians? No, I don't believe he does. And also, you talked to him today, and he certainly didn't act the, the way he, he did, like he does. No, so. he sounded actually pretty chipper. He sounded happier in the last two, three times that I've talked to him than he sounded at the beginning. I think he's relaxing into this whole process. And, um, and it's a done deal. And it's a done deal. So there's a lot of good things here. The, uh, the other question can only be answered by Peter, which is how we handle the DOT review, because I did suggest that there were a couple of ways to go. You can send a rough draft early. You can wait until, you know, the editing is done. There's different stages, but yeah. I think Peter is going to have more ideas about that. And if he does, you can certainly reach out within the company because they, they go through these a lot. The only person I know that's ever had trouble with those Ironically, is um, uh, blanking on his name right now, Jack Carr, mm -hmm. and it's weird because that's fiction, and either somebody doesn't like him or he reached <laughs> out without the necessity of reaching out, which can always be a fatal mistake. Yes, I never send stuff over there. 
Um, and of course, you know, they raked them over the coals when No Easy Day came out. And it was ridiculous. So uh, we don't want to tangle with those folks, but it's going to happen. I'm just going to mute, mute, just mute, mute them for, for, to, to, to kind of protect their, 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 their deal plan. I, I felt I felt like he was um, letting us listen in on purpose. Otherwise, he would have said, you know, given the, the gang sign from you. I, 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 th I thought so, too. I, 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 did, I <clears throat> always want to protect that whatever the process of the deal that, that, that they're, they're working on. But I, Adam, I just want to say, like, part of the reason that we have this on justiceforhire.app is just for um, someone to be able to go there and press a button, choose the role of hero, villain, or client. And just say why they're the hero to hire. Even if they're a villain, they say why they're the hero to hire. And that's very intentional because it <clears throat> it's a simple way of getting start someone to start thinking about the exact things that Rick was saying in his um, in his class uh, and the advice he was giving you, which is like if someone wakes up, do they wake up? And what what happens in the in, in the experience, the overall experience? Uh, for their their day that in, in seconds, how do we know who you are and get a sense of you? And <clears throat> this is a, a I got a great picture of it in my mind just from him suggesting it. And, and I really, you know, uh, I really feel uh, focused and inspired because, you know, it's, it's sometimes you just need a, a little bit of feedback and direction. Yeah. Um, and you have and, so much and that, hit, that hits home. You have so much to offer, like as as a human being, that I think you you through the lens of, of a character. Uh, I, I play a, a fictionalized version of myself, Jan. Um, so I, I use my same name, <clears throat> but other people like Blunt Force Trauma, who just joined a few weeks ago. He's been talking about us mm -hmm. for. I, I, you saw you met him. You met him on the hero meetup, and so mm -hmm. you know, he, he built his own costume and everything. So like you know, th I think there's a, a spectrum there, and wherever you fit in on it. Uh, there's value and so and that that to me is the dream come true that all of us can collaborate so i would are you already on the gfh app um i think you came like I, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i signed up i signed up it's just that the video that i the original video that i tried was me doing um a, a band a band um illegal style of uh in china it's illegal to do this particular type of healing um and because because there was a particular day when 50,000 people emerged to go practice this in public and because they have a communist government um, they said you can't make public demonstrations that large without interacting with the local government so they banned it and um, so it's illegal so so as a villain uh, this particular move uh, you bring the chi up the inside of the legs and through the armpits and then you cross and you put on um, right, you start here. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> and you put on this helmet. I, I can't do it while I'm sitting. But, and so I have it in a way where I had my hands were glowing under the black light. And I, and I put a trail effect and a blur effect on it. And so, um, and then I was using an app to, um, it's like a, do you know the Harry Potter, like they, they go like scramble and they disappear? Or they mm -hmm. scramble and they up here mm -hmm. into a scene. Yes. So the app has that effect in it. And you, you know, you stand there, you hit record and then it says jump and then you jump and it makes the animation. Um, and so I had put all that together as my villain entry of like, I come down with this energy that I've built up for like 20 minutes and it's just that clip of it. Um, but uh, it, it, it sounds so great as I'm describing it, but what I caught on film was <laughs> was 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 silly looking. So I want to try again, which is why I have the cameras set up. Um, I have I have two uh, two lateral, yeah. one above. So, so I said, yeah. this, this is really all you need because you press you press your phone and you can press action and you can just shoot it on your phone. And, and I, you know, along the lines of what Rick was saying is that uh, <clears throat> the uh, too much of the technical side can really take away yep. from like the core thing that we're. Yeah, I heard. I heard with, that too. Yeah, which is really just you, <clears throat> because JFH. It's also important to to uh, remember that that this is a no superpower kind of the only thing that we're really uh, uh, allowing the universe are more. Um, uh, let me put it this way, uh, like esoteric, uh, you know, uh, 
mental potential mental powers like so like but i i do have the i do have the ability Hmm? i i do have the ability to translocate so uh, as a human as a human i do have the ability to translocate so i wanted to bring that into the 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 character so i know i I understand what you're saying like for example like we have someone like named guru merkaba aka kaba who who, i think you might have met as well and so he, he he uses like sound bowls and things like that. And he has a whole, there's, there is the, there is the, Marvel didn't start out with Doctor Strange. They started out with Iron Man and uh, it, for various reasons. But the important thing with Iron Man is that Iron Man was a man who put on a suit and that suit had all these capabilities and brought out aspects of himself, et cetera. But at the same time, we were very grounded in the human journey there in that mm. in that first film, and I think that all of the Marvel films, as they they progress, they really consistently grounded us in the human experience uh, before emphasizing the, the the powers. And I think that's really really important uh, for for the the characters that we have here, especially for for people around the nation and around the globe who have been joining on our on app. Like you don't need a superpower, and whatever thing that you personally do. Uh, the, the, and abilities that you may have that may be very rare um, and that many people may not be aware is even possible for a human being to do because I know that you guys uh, like, like especially if you're, if you're doing any of this stuff where you're essentially slowing yourself down expanding your awareness and speeding up your perception you could do things a lot of people may not necessarily you know even contemplate in a day mm-hmm. and so I think it's really really important to be able to when you're offering your character, because I look at this as a service, and now we're talking about like my personal perspective, but as I'm offering my character, I want to make sure that I'm giving people something to, to that, that is uh, uh, relatable in their day that they can touch and hold on to and then bring them into the, 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 my, my personal world where I can showcase more of the things, more of the magic that happens in my personal world. And I think if you take that approach of saying, okay, well, if you're playing Adam, if you're playing a version of yourself and to just be like, hey, I'm Adam, like you can, you can reach out to me anytime. I'm always there to, uh, to, to, to help or to heal, et cetera. A very simple video that just gives you, removes all the need for perfection. And that's just you saying, this is my character. I think that will do, do wonders for the, your, your foundational narrative and, 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 connecting that to the scene that Rick was talking about and building out from there with other characters. Yeah, that, that suggestion of just starting the day with me, like, I, I love that how, what could happen from there, because that's how every day for me starts, right, with me starting every day. So I love, I love that as a suggestion of a place to, to get out of the, the mental labyrinth of, of what am I going to film and how am I going to film it and what's the story like, and start with, start with waking up. I love those that. Are just road, really those are just roadblocks. Those are just really creative people put in front of themselves to to stop worrying, because if they never do the job, they never have to worry about doing a good job. So it's just mm-hmm. a matter of figuring out what you want to say, figuring out really fun and clever ways. If you find yourself just like it's just like Tai Chi. I know I'm doing my Kung Fu correct when I start to smile. And I have to actively stop. You know, I want to relax. I don't want to use those muscles. I want to use those muscles to relax not to get happy but but getting happy is the joy of it so when i'm being creative for my books and by the way that phone call was to let me know that the 10-month project well you heard due january 4th uh is looks to be a 99.9 percent go and so that's sweet um that's a a super big book in any case um, congratulations that's awesome it's, it's fun Everything is fun. If you can make everything fun, that it will communicate. And if you're and if you're busy getting in your own way with how you're going to do this, how you're going to do stuff that is not integral to the story you're te- you're telling, again, my attitude is: where should I put the camera? You should put it here. Just put it here. Take what's in the shot, but fill the shot with fun stuff, mm. communicate stuff. I mean, so people, I love. That's another thing when you were talking about Marvel. I love their Easter eggs. What's great about the Marvel stuff is that after I watch each episode or each movie, I go over to YouTube onto the new Rockstars channel and watch their videos about all the Easter eggs. And there are dozens in every single one. These guys know what they're doing. They know how to fill 
a panel. I mean, if you, I mean, you can learn stuff about all three of us from what's behind us in each of these. Rick, I'm always looking at your backgrounds. I'm like, look at the films and theory book. <laughs> what is that thing in the bottom right hand corner of the screen? Hold on, let me pin that. Tighten your thoughts, Bob. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me pin you. There's a brain that uh, the, the amazing Creskin gave me. And whenever I have an issue, I just want to tighten my brain, tighten my thoughts. <laughs> so, yeah. Rick, Rick I, I, want, I want to be mindful of your chicken. And, and, and I'm yeah, it's chicken. Rick's chicken. I, I got to go take care of my chicken. But I, I, just, I just want to say, I, I definitely want to do uh, a, a, a video again with-, with Of the lecture. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to see the lecture if, if, if or we can just do one and, and maybe we'll set that up in the coming weeks. Um, with you because I wanted to get you on a podcast anyway. I also would love to do a podcast with you. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, a podcast with you and Jeff Gomez. I'll talk to him about this because Jeff is now a new partner at, uh, at New Rockstars and, and he's the leading mind in transmedia storytelling, consults to Disney as well for, for Marvel and Star Wars. And I feel like you two on a podcast together would be mind blowing. I think things will melt. So like, <laughs> I think we got to do this as soon as possible. And- uh, sure. And, 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 and yes, I want to do it like a little, I'll, I'll message you about doing a, a promo video that's essentially you saying, hey, we're doing the cleaners, like expanding Justice for Our Universe with the cleaners and just introducing that to the audience. Because I think that'll, I think that'll be really helpful for our, our current community round and also help us actually get the funds to produce the thing, hopefully by the end of this year. And we could be shooting with you and Vincent and, and uh, the whole cat crew. I'll, I will be sitting here until January 4th. So anytime. Amazing. And as you, as Jan already knows, but now you know, it's not getting me to start talking; it's getting me to stop. Well, I, and I'll connect you guys too, guys. I, 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 I I'd watch. have to want. I'd have to want you to stop to have to to be able to mention it. So that's the problem. I don't want you to stop talking. I'm, that's that's good for me. Aren't you both in Jersey too? <laughs> no, I'm in Connecticut. Uh, try right, not far, not far. No, not that far. But I don't have a car anymore. Okay, good for you. I, my car was sabotaged. My car was uh, vandalized. Oh, no. Oh, I, I gave up on it. And also, I was uh, for the last three years, I was just driving in order to keep it alive. So it's a 50, it was a 15 year old car, but it was a Prius. And some guys came in at four in the morning and took out the catalytic converter. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. So and at that point, I said, I said to the dealership, you want it? And they said, yeah, here, here's, here's a couple of thousand bucks. Oh, Sounds like a good trade. I mean, where are we going anywhere with uh, right now? It's internal, so. Bingo. So in any case, with this new job, I, I can afford a new car if I want to get one. But I don't like any of these cars. I, I, I go through these parking lots and I'm going, is there any car in this entire parking lot that I want? But anyway, at some point. Yeah. But yeah, but you guys have cars, right? I, I, I'm a scooter forward person in Los Angeles. Dan, before I forget, Comic-Con. Yes. You in? 100%. All right. Because I have to put together the proposal uh, to get to them by May 9th. So you're on the, you're on the panel. Oh, thank you. Well, let, let, let me know if you'd like uh, the, the JFH community involved again as well. Probably because this is going to probably be the last one. It will also be the 25th. And so it's going to be a tribute so we want guests from the whole history oh no why is it the last one because kung fu is dying the kung fu film is dying <laughs> you have the best panel at comic-con you can't do that and also the audience is shrinking you notice our audience has been shrinking over the last couple of years no, we, no, we need and to also on I'm, I'm also old no we need to continue it we got to continue this well you guys well what may happen is you guys can take it over if i'm doing jfh stuff then we can make it into a JFH Kung Fu extravaganza or whatever. Oh, so man. yeah, we, we definitely want you there this year then. Oh, I mean, There's no guarantee I'm even gonna be able to go this year. I'll show up on screen, I'll show up by video if I'm not there in person. But, and, and also Frank is in and, and all the, the rest of the happy gang is in. Chris Mancini just put out a podcast with he and I yesterday. So I gotta, I gotta share that. Have, did you, have you read the, the case comics? Of uh, White Cat Entertainment's comics? No, not yet. The you know the Return of the Kung Fu Dragon or whatever you know he has two of those. I, I came it. down really hard on him for those. They were I just ugh, I did not like them at all because again they were not real kung fu. They were all they 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 were chopped sake suey. 
we love you, Chris. And we also love you, Alan Goldberg. You know, <laughs> there's all those people that <laughs> she had me, even though you kicked me out. I love you too. <laughs> oh, yeah, you may want to edit. You may want to edit. The, are, uh, are you well, saying it's like long, long duck dong type of stuff? Yeah. Oh, are, are you saying it's long duck dong type of stuff? No, long duck dong is better than this because long duck dong is at least honest to long duck dong. It's not, it's right. not false. It's not. BS. It's not chop sake suey. It's not, long, long it's not a bunch of white people. It's not, you know, the Disney Mulan. It's not a bunch of white people doing one from column A, one from column B. It's not fistful of vengeance on Netflix. Mm -hmm. This is all crap done by white people with blinding ignorance to what they're talking about. So yeah, yeah. erasure is awful. Which one? Erasure is, you know, it's like the cultural appropriation and erasure of the, oh yeah, of the lineage and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's very, de it's denigrating. That's why I was so happy with everything, everywhere, all at once. That is not. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, and that's what's happening now. That's what JFH has to move into. What they're doing with that, where, where somebody sees what's crap, do what Jackie Chan did. See what's crap and turn it on its head and have fun with it and make it different. And you know, again, revolutionize the industry. Should we go and see this in theaters? Is that is that what needs to happen? Should I need, yes. to, I need to get up and actually go to a movie theater? No, no, you don't need to do that. Because um, I will do it. But no way. But Spider Man No Way Home was the best kung fu movie of the year. Well, and then I got COVID two days later. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I blame that on you. So, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that in the theaters. I saw it elsewhere. But um, yeah, we, we just have to make good, fun movies that people can enjoy anywhere. And the Academy does not have to accept them because they're being stupid. I mean, the Academy gave Walt Disney uh, an Oscar and seven little Oscars for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs back in the uh, 30s because they were smart. And now, the, uh, the Academy, uh, did you see the Academy Awards? Only the slap, only the slap. The rest of it was worse. The rest of it was worse mm. because you know, you know what I was, you know what I liked about the Academy Awards is the the gentleman who designed the set. I thought that the set was incredible. That's that's a great. Yeah, point. but unfortunately, they took three female. They got three female hosts and made and turned them into man hungry assholes. Then they had three, with all the actors from the James Bond movies who are still alive, all the directors. They get three extreme sports peoples to introduce a, a uninspiring clip to celebrate the 60 years of James Bond. Then they have three Disney live action princesses tell the audience that, oh, we know parents that you just tolerate these animated movies so, as your kids watch them over and over again. They denigrated everything. That basically the whole show was about how we the Academy hate movies. Hate movies? Yeah, basically the, oh whole, my God. the whole thing was we <laughs> hate movies. You know, we we denigrate oh this this animation crap, this James Bond crap. I mean, these female these female hosts who have who are only given character and credence during the entire show if they're feeling up men, if they're lusting after men, if they're trying to get Kirsten Dunst away from her husband Jesse Plemons. I mean, this stuff was like. So when the slap happened, I wasn't I wasn't surprised because the whole epi the whole show was a slap to the face of the film lover. Mm. Astonishing! Wow, that is heavy language, Rick, and I yeah. and I resonate with it completely. You, you, know, you don't you don't disagree? Not at all. I no. think I think I came here to hear that from. I, this is the best conversation that I've been a part of about the um, the slap. Yeah, uh, like, that is that is brilliant, Rick. Well, Truly. It's only because it's true. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it just I, like... my whole body felt that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the show like that. So, in any case, mm. you know, I'll, again, I'll go on forever. I love my it. chicken. The stove. The stove is off, but I have no idea what condition the chicken is in. I've, the I've also been waiting on my own chicken. Oh, oh my, my god, god that's right. You were served a long time ago. I just well, now you know me. Happy birthday, buddy. When's love your birthday, you, Adam? When's your birthday? May 9th. Oh, my best friend and my and my brother are May, are May 7th. Well, so so this is what's interesting. 
um, May 7th can sometimes fall on Mother's Day, as, as does May 9th. And, um, but Jan is actually like, what is he like, 29 days older than me. So, so we, and I think we were born like within the same geography of, Jan, were you born in New York? Yeah, 92nd Street. Yeah, so I think, um, uh, Too midwives. for me it was, yeah. So I think we were born with, we might've, we might've hung out in the same parks as kids and, and met each other. And I'm pretty sure that that's very likely. It's more than likely that's, that that's the New York story. Yeah. So you got, so you're, what, you're 40 today? I am 40 today. I'm only 28 years old older than you. Oh, man. Hey, man, that's a good life. That's good. The beard, the beard. Anyway, but, but you know, Lee, Lee Chin Young lived to the age of 256. So how much, how much would you like to get to? You know, uh, Me? Yeah. I don't care. I was, I was talking with Vincent <laughs> Lin today from the Ukraine. No, he was actually in Latvia today. He called me from Latvia. I know Vince, I know Vincent Lin. Yeah, there you go. I know him. Well, yeah, he's, he's a, totally he is, a, he is a, wow, what an awesome person. I don't know if we can even say what he's, what he's, what he's yeah. done out loud, but oh my God, what a, well, he's what supposed a to be in the cleaners. He's supposed to be one of the guys in the cleaners, but he may not have okay. the time. Oh my God. Vincent, he, Vincent is a literal, literal hero. Like it's not a JF, he's not a hero and he's a literal hero of the world. He's only five. Yeah. He's only five years younger than me. So all our discussions in the, in the last couple of years has all been, we're fine. Whatever happens now, because he just put out an article about the possibility of nuclear war. Mm -hmm. So that was, he put that out today. So he, so when he, he wanted to call me, I said, you walked into a, you walked into a theater, you shouted fire and you didn't bother telling anybody where the fire escapes were. So yeah, he says, we're doing an, I'm doing another article where it tells you where the fire escapes mm -hmm. are. I said, that's great. Mm -hmm. But our attitude is, I don't care how long I last. Again, that four-year-old girl who died between my Santa visits, I've already done everything I've ever wanted to do. Now I'm just doing it again. And I'm doing it better, which is exciting. But I've done movies, I've done television, I've done 75 books, I'm doing my 76. Matter of fact, my 77th, because I, in November, I had to write, I had to finish someone else's book because they collapsed on it. It's a big, it's a big best-selling series. And they called me in to finish it. He did 40,000 words. I had to write 45,000 words in three weeks. And I did. And, and the editors used the word brilliant and genius at times. And I'm going, oh, stop it. But in any case, so I'm just, I'm, everything I do from, I've done everything. I'm, I feel like Jackie Chan did. Jackie Chan told me the last time we had a deep discussion was that, Rick, I've done everything three times. And then I the Fireman it. movie. He didn't do the Fireman movie. Yeah, but well, but but he doesn't need to do another movie. I'm but what I told him then is what he realized his mistake because he was concentrating on accomplishments, not on his internal peace and need. Because by that time, the only thing Jackie Chan needed to do and needs to do in his entire life, and he probably never will now, he never can now, is break the cycle of abandonment. Jackie was abandoned twice by two different families, which completely made him, but also destroyed him. So when he, in 2001, when we were talking about that, he said, Rick, I've done everything three times. I went, Jackie, how old is your son now? And he thought about it. And he realized what I was asking him and his head lowered. And he realized that that was it. He missed his opportunity to do the one great thing in his life that he needed to do, which was not to abandon his own son. That was the important thing. And he'll never have a chance. So now, so now I know what makes Jackie tick. He cannot stop running now because if he runs, he has to face himself. And he already hates himself from the way his two different families treated him. So, so again, I don't need to do anything more. What I want to do is that whatever happens, I want to be able to say whenever the end comes, that was fun. That was good. I'd do that again. I may not say that though, because I told you this, I, I alluded to the story of my father coming back from the, from the dead to let me know, because I asked him on his fourth deathbed, because he kept not dying. 
I asked him on his fourth not deathbed, if there's more to this, if there's something afterwards, could you let me know? And he very seriously thought about it and said, yeah, I will. And then he did. So at that point I went, all right, we're good. We're good. And since then I've met other people who have come up to me and somebody at the last Tai Chi alchemy that I attended, which was about four years ago, came up to me and said, be ready, be ready. Unbeknownst to you, you're being scouted. And apparently that was, that was spiritual. So mm. apparently there's, there's a lot of crap going on afterwards. There's a lot of stuff and it's all energy based. So you guys have a head start. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And then it's a matter of, I worship at the church of we'll find out. Mm. We'll see. Is there life after death? We'll find out. So again, I mean, I was talking to my friend Elisa, who's at the Comic-Con as well, because we're talking about what we're going to do this year, for the, whether we're going to go to Disneyland afterwards. And we're talking about food. And I said, I've had all the good food. Now I just want to have, you know, really good food that I've made myself for the last three years. Speaking of that, on to the chicken. All right. I love you. I love you. I love you. Happy birthday. Happy future birthday. But probably we'll talk to you before May 9th, Adam. Take I'll care. Both yeah, I would love that. I'll get you guys. I'll loop you guys either on email so you can stay in contact too right now. Love you. See you later. Thanks, guys.